the entrance antiphon, here is a wise virgin from among the number of the prudent who went forth with lighted lamp to meet Christ. Alleluia. Good morning. We come to pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace, the grace, the love of Jesus our risen Lord be with you all. Amen. And we continue to celebrate this feast of Easter, this time when Christ rose from the dead, when Christ brought to us new life, a life that he said is not just yours alone, but it is my life in you. And so we thank God for the graces that God gives us today, especially the grace of being able to participate in these sacred mysteries. We welcome God's love into our lives and we ask God's forgiveness for our sinfulness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May indeed Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, author of our freedom and of our salvation, listen to the voice of our pleading and grant that those you have redeemed by the shedding of your son's blood may have life through you and under your protection rejoice forever unharmed through our lord jesus the christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit god forever and ever Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Paphos, Paul and his companions set sail and arrived at Perga and Pamphylia. But John left them and returned to Jerusalem. They continued on from Perga and reached Antioch and Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered into the synagogue and took their seats after reading the law and the prophets. The synagogue officials sent word to them. My brothers, if one of you has a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. So Paul got up, motioned with his hand and said, fellow children of Israel and you others who are God fearing, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out, and for about 40 years, he put up with them in the desert. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance. At the end of about 450 years, after these people, he provided judges up to Samuel and the prophet. Then they asked for a king, God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man from the tribe of Benjamin for 40 years. Then he removed him and raised up David as their king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior. Jesus. John Herald is coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me, 
and I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him, and that my arm may make him strong. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and though through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, my Rock, and my Savior. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ, you are the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead. You have loved us and freed us from our sins by your blood. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord is with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. This reading of John comes from the 13th chapter, so it was the very beginning of the Lord's Supper, Last Supper with his apostles. And this is the gospel that we had heard on Holy Thursday. <clears throat> when Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, he said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, no slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. I am not speaking to all of you. I know those whom I have chosen, but so the, that the scriptures may be fulfilled, the one who ate my food has raised his heel against me. From now on, I am telling you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe that I am. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever receives the one I sent receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. In his discourse with his disciples before he died, Jesus brought together so many of the teachings that he had told them about during those three years when he was with them, when he chose them, when they followed him, and when they learned little by little what it meant to be his follower. And the greatest one of all, of course, the one that would come out as Jesus says, this is the one thing I leave for you. If everything else, even if you forget it, this one thing is important. Love one another as I have loved you. Now that second part is very important. As I have loved you. And so Jesus taught his disciples to be people who would go out and spread that love of his to other people. Other people who did not know it. I was very privileged during those many years as I spent with a mission, as a missionary in Madagascar to go so often to villages where people knew absolutely nothing about Jesus Christ. 
And it was such a blessing to be able to bring that message of Jesus to these people. Some of them listened and accepted. Others said, well, it's pretty hard to do that, to believe in that. And well, we'll think about this a little more. But it was never me that was speaking. It was always Christ who was there bringing his word through me to the people. We have the first example of how that happened in our first reading today. Now, Paul was on his first missionary journey. Paul was going to make three of these long missionary journeys that would take months and months and months. And sometimes he would stay in in different villages for two, three months at a time, you know. And when he was in Athens the very first time with Barnabas, uh, before he started these other missionary activities, he stayed for a year and a half just to teach the people, to help the people to understand what he had been privileged to understand in the scriptures. And so today we have Paul who who comes to Pamphylia and, and he goes as usual to the synagogue. In the beginning, Paul would go directly to the Jewish people because he knew that Jesus had come, first of all, for those Jewish people. They were God's chosen people. And so Jesus was there and he lived among them. He was one of them and he brought that message to them. And so Paul would go to the synagogue first of all. Why? Because there was an affinity between them. It's like, uh, I don't know how many of you have had the opportunity to live outside the country, but many times when you are in a strange country that has different customs, that has a different language. It's very natural to uh, find people who are of the same custom as you are, let's say Americans, and to be able to have a certain affinity with them because you grew up in the same culture, you speak the same language. It was just a natural thing. And so Paul would go first to the synagogue. And he would speak about Jesus. So there's a lot of things that 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 those Jewish people would understand just by mentioning a name or so. If you happen to mention, uh, for example, the Ten Commandments, they knew what those were. You didn't have to go in and explain to them everything about how these came to be, uh, what they were, what they entailed. They knew that. And so Paul would go to them and he would talk to them. And starting from what they knew, He would build upon it to be able to bring Jesus and Jesus' message, Jesus' love through his resurrection, through his death on the cross and his resurrection, to uh, let people recognize that great love that Jesus had. And so Paul did that in the very beginning. And in some places, some of the people said yes to that, but other of the people, no, we'll hear you more about this later on. We're not ready to commit ourselves at all. And one of, the, one of the things that is so extraordinary, a lot of the times the first ones to believe him were the women. Not the men, the women. They understood perhaps a little more what that love really meant and that love that Jesus had, what that, what that meant for them and for others. And they were a lot of times the first ones to invite Paul back and into their homes and to be able to talk to them and the people who are in their homes, their servants. Paul recognized that Jesus was a servant of all, as we read in the gospel. John, whom he talks about, John the Baptist, who he talks about, uh, he recognized John as saying, I am not not worthy to unleashen the straps of Jesus. Just as take off his sandals even, I'm not even worthy of that and coming in contact with this holiness that is Jesus in our world. And so we have grown up in our faith, most of us anyway, from the time we were children. We were talking about that in the sacristy before. Some of the things that we were able to do, even as children, that were expressions of our faith. And that faith has been with us many years in our lifetime and has brought us here again today. And so we thank God for that faith, for that understanding that God gives us little by little as we grow, that understanding of what it means to love one another 
as Christ has loved us. And Jesus said, all the commandments are contained in this one, that you love one another as I have loved you. And so we continue to ask God to be with us, to help us to grow each day. Each day we breathe in and out all day long. It's just something natural to us. And when it becomes difficult and labored, then we know that perhaps there's something wrong with us. Well, our faith is that much too. It should be something that goes with us each day. Well, no matter where we go, if we go to the market, if we go fill up our car at the gas station, um, no matter what we're doing, we come here to church, or we go to a meeting, whatever it is, we go as a representative of Christ, as someone who wants to live Christ's message. And we do that all day long. It's just like our breathing in and out and in and out all day long. We don't even think of it, but it guides us and it helps us to be able to grow in that love of Christ. And so we ask God, especially at this Mass today, that God will help us today. Help us to recognize all the beauty that God has put into our lives throughout the years. It's there. It's God's beauty. He wants, us, wants it to shine within us. And so let us ask God for that help today to be people who can shine with the love of God in our lives. And now my brothers and sisters, with confidence in our hearts, knowing that God will always do what is good for us, not necessarily what we ask of him, because many times we really don't know what is good for us in our lives and what will continue to lead us to God, not only in this life, but through all eternity. And so we turn to God and we pray. For the people of God, may we be strengthened by the Holy Spirit in our faith and witness to the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in positions of earthly power, may the Lord grant them charity and prudence in their efforts to bend the arc of history towards justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those struggling with difficult decisions and the burdens of circumstance, may God give them the grace and strength to endure and overcome. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are gathered here, may Christ in the Eucharist continue to transform us for his work in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they rejoice in the presence of God for all eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today's Mass is being offered up for Manuel A. da Costa, Maria Montero, and Jose Figueredo. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, that we ask that you grant peace to our world, especially in those places where there is so much tur turmoil, where people have to hide because of their faith or just because of their wanting to be a free people. We ask you, dear Lord, to bless them and allow peace to be something that rules in our world because peace is a sign of your love. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, 
fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with this sacrifice we offer you this morning with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sinfulness. Pray, my brothers and sisters, pray that this your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to our almighty God. <laughs> Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain to the gift of, eternal, of eternity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to our Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open for, to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and his rising to life and his rising, the life for all who have risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God host, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus the Christ, by the working and power of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be made to the offering of your name. And therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by that same spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your son, our Lord, Jesus the Christ. On the night before he was betrayed, he took bread and he gave you thanks, he said the blessing, and then he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, or this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his coming, his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession we rely for your unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and unity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edgar, our Bishop, and all the bishops and the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family which you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing for you, to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our, our Lord, through whom you give us all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now joining our brother Jesus, we pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yes, Lord, deliver us from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await in joyful hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, peace is my gift to you. Look not upon our sinfulness, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may indeed that peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We have that peace in our hearts. Now let us share a sign of it with others. God be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we dare to eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and body. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sinfulness of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us safe for everlasting life. Amen. At this time, you can make a spiritual communion. I love you, O oh my God. I cannot receive you in holy communion. Come nevertheless and visit me with your graces. Come spiritually into my heart. Purify it, sanctify it, and render it like unto your own. Amen.
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord is with you. And, with and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration of this sacrament has ended this morning. Now let us go and live our faith in joy. Thanks, Have a wonderful day, everyone.
Holy Mary, Mother of God.
fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy 